So during my stream the other day, somebody asked for some tips on character movement, and normally I'd prefer to do a little more well-edited videos, but Fubla has suggested I just take what I did on the stream and put it out there as a video, so here you go. Yeah, so I do have some tips here. The first is you need to know this equation. The displacement equals velocity times time, or delta time, plus one half a t squared. So that is like the fundamental equation for doing movement. But this, this part gets problematic because if you have a maximum velocity, you don't necessarily want to add the additional acceleration. So what you can do as kind of a shortcut, we can have V0, that's our velocity from the last frame, and then V1 is going to be V0 plus acceleration times time. Sorry, my mouse writing is not the best. This is where calculus stuff comes in. I never, It never quite clicked to me figuring out the area of under a curve. So if you imagine you're moving the distance you move. So if your velocity is zero, you're going to move zero. And then the next frame, you've got some velocity due to acceleration. And you're going to move. And you're going to move. If you apply the velocity before you've applied the acceleration, that's going to be wrong. You're going to move zero in that frame, but you should move some. And if you apply the acceleration and then apply the velocity to your movement, you're going to move too far because the actual distance that you move is going to be like, it's going to be a linear increase if you've got a linear acceleration. So the fancy thing about that is if you do this, and you realize the actual distance you need to move is basically defined in that little triangle there. Well, that is half of this square. So if you imagine the displacement, if you have no acceleration, the displacement is the velocity times the time, right? And that just so happens that it's the area of a rectangle. You got your velocity on one axis and your time on the other. And it's kind of weird to think about that being the area of a rectangle, but if you think of it like that, and then you split that in half, if you've got acceleration, we can take our displacement and say, well, we just take the velocity before the acceleration and then the velocity after the acceleration and multiply that by 0.5 to get the average. And that will get you a nice frame rate independent displacement. So the reason why this is important is because the higher frame rate you have, if you're doing your movement on the actual frame rate. Now, if you're doing the movement on the physics tick rate, it's not quite as critical because if your frame rate varies, you're not going to get different jump heights and whatnot. But if you imagine like character jumping, you know, you're going to get this arc of a, of a jump. And if you are applying the acceleration due to gravity first, the actual height that the character is going to jump is going to be reduced. And if you apply it second after, then the height is going to increase. So based on your frame rate, you could be jumping higher or lower. And then if you ever tweak those values or the update rate or whatever, you know, you might have a ledge that you can like jump up to at one frame rate and then at another frame rate you can't which is a, a very famous thing when dealing with quake jumping and jump maps and such like that or quake 2 especially because depending on the frame rate there's different areas of the map where you want to increase the frame rate or decrease the frame rate to be able to reach different areas which is kind of silly you'd want that to just be consistent i feel like that's sort of a, a nonsense thing that's, that players shouldn't have to deal with that it should just be consistent if you imagine that we have half the frame rate like this being flat and then going up well actually it'd be flat and then it would go up like twice as much but you know the amount of change is dependent on the frame rate and then if, if the frame rate is like super high then you're going to have that almost linear increase because each frame is going to be just about there you're just going to have some slight alterations and you have something that's like pretty close to accurate physics I'll do a quick little stair step demonstration, which is another big gotcha. So doing like a sphere or capsule style thing can be kind of difficult because when you hit a step, you might get a weird normal that's going to be like that and it can tend to like launch the character off. So I tend to prefer using like boxes or cylinders. So when the character moves along and we hit this step or bump or whatever, then we're gonna get a perfectly horizontal normal. And then we can check if that normal is not a walkable normal. What we do is we do a cast up your max step height over some amount that's kind of subjective and then do a cast back down and then check if when we did that cast back down, if that is a walkable normal. And if it is, then we pop the character up and then you'll have to do something to smooth the like camera and mesh and such. But basically what I do is I pop the character up instantly, the collision of the character up instantly, and then we let the character kind of keep going. And so basically it's gonna pop and then we hit the next step, it's gonna pop up. And then we have to do some, some smoothing and damping and stuff to make the 
mesh handle that elegantly so it's not really jarring from the player's perspective to be popping up and down these things. That's kind of like the overview of how my stair-stepping logic works. In practice, there's all kinds of weird little edge cases and such that you just kind of have to deal with some way or another. <laughs> but yeah, that's that's kind of the method that I've found works best. The other big advantage of doing it this way is because you can have lots of different things applying acceleration and depending on how your code is structured it can be really difficult like it's like you might be applying gravity in one function and you might be applying input acceleration in another function and then i don't know maybe you've got like a grapple swinging or something that's applying acceleration in another function and then you've got like some gravity grenade or something that's applying acceleration somewhere else and so trying to consolidate that all into one function so you can do this can be a real challenge but if you just do this then all you have to do is at the beginning, you say V0 equals whatever your velocity is, and then you can you can set your new velocity to whatever, wherever, and then you just do this calculation. The one gotcha is that you have to make sure if there's something that like explicitly sets the velocity of the character, like if you have a trigger or something like that, a jump pad, and you wanna set the velocity like exactly that frame to be some exact value, then you need to make sure that you set it on v1 and v0 so that when you do this calculation later then it's uh it's giving the correct velocity when it's doing that calculation so v0 is just going to be the velocity at the beginning of the frame so v0 is just basically velocity last frame so that's before you do any calculations and then v1 is going to be after you apply various acceleration due to gravity or player input or whatever else is accelerating your character so typically when i do it so this is what i do the velocity pre-excel i'm not sure why i did that after the drag i think i might have switched it around because i had a bug when i was dealing with the drag and i thought it was something with that so basically yeah i've got like a velocity pre-excel and i set that to the velocity which is going to be whatever the velocity was last frame then we take and modify our velocity based on like the gravity times the delta yada 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 and then when we go to do the movement we get the velocity average which is going to be the velocity pre-acceleration and then the current velocity times 0.5 this is another reason that i don't like using the move and slide function because move and slide just uses velocity and there's no way to do frame rate independent movement with that so i do move and collide so yeah we calculate the displacement which is going to be the velocity average times the delta time here and then we do move and collide oh yeah another thing that i do is we do multiple steps in the movement because likely what's going to happen the character is going to be on or near the ground and then you're going to apply some gravity and that's going to add a little bit of downward velocity and then when you do the movement it's going to immediately hit the ground and if it immediately hits the ground it's not going to move anywhere so basically what you need to do is you need to handle the collision of that so you're going to have some vector if it's standing still then it's just going to be straight down and then we need to take the normal I do uh, somewhere in here there's like a handle collision which basically we just take the dot product with the collision normal and then we subtract the collision normal times that dot product. I also do a check here because every once in a while we get some weird collision stuff. I think if you're like penetrating something you might have a collision with a normal. That's the wrong way. So I just check and make sure the dot product is uh, less than zero because if you're moving down and you collide with something that's moving that way then the dot product should be a negative value. If it's ever a positive value that means you collided with something that you're moving out of and in that case you just want to keep moving out of that thing. Right, right, yes. Yeah. So if you have multiple accelerations due to gravity and player input, whatever, then the velocity is just kind of plus equals whatever acceleration times that delta time. That's the majority of it. And the rest is just dealing with edge cases. So I did get a little distracted and fail to finish my thought about why there's multiple steps or iterations in the movement process. And that is because if you collide with something partway through the frame, for example, you're moving and halfway through the frame of movement, you hit a wall or hit the ground or something like that. You don't want to just stop because that can result in very stuttery character movement. Well, say your displacement was like 10 centimeters or something like that. And then five centimeters into that, you collided with something. You'd still want another five centimeters worth of movement after that collision. So if you if you hit a wall or you glance off of something, you want to continue that movement. So you would take the percentage of the movement that you have left and then multiply that by the time and then do another loop through that uh, movement function or movement calculation. Another thing you have to be careful of is so you don't get stuck in an infinite loop. If you're like colliding with something and you can't move at all, you need to have some kind of limitation on that. So you have like a number of retries, like three or five retries before 
you stop moving entirely and just move on because the character is clearly stuck or it's going to take too much processing to do that many calculations. Hopefully that was at least somewhat coherent and informative. I do want to put together a much better and more well thought out and illustrated video about this topic, but I got the suggestion to just get something out there as it might be helpful to people. And speaking of helpful, check out my awesome patrons. I really do appreciate the support. And if there is something that you would like to see, if you're a patron, be sure to post that on my Patreon or just tell me, I guess, whatever. Uh, patrons do get prior priority when it comes to figuring out what videos I'm going to work on next. But if you do have any quick game dev questions, feel free to swing by while I'm streaming, which is pretty much every weeknight from around 7.30 p.m. EDT. I think that's close to zero o'clock UTC. And I go on for, I don't know, five or six hours. And I guess I did do quite a bit of editing on this rather than just posting the stream as it was. Oh, well, I just can't help myself.